Hi guys, so for today um, I thought I would talk about the latest online class that I just finished doing which is James Gurney's Collar in Practice Part 1 because uh, I believe it's going to be a part of a series. So this one I bought on Gumroad for $17.99 US which works out to about $25 Canadian and it's 69 minutes long. So uh, basically in that class he talks about um, uh, transparency and opacity, underpainting, the Zorn palette, uh, wet blend, uh, what else, um, complementaries and color after images. And then uh, he makes you do, or he shows anyways, uh, exercises that you can do and basically how you can apply it on your own work. And in the video, he uses gouache and watercolor so that's what uh, I ended up doing and um, I was actually thinking of using oil paints but uh, I've been using oil paints a lot lately and I haven't used um, a watercolor and gouache so I thought uh, I'd, I'd give it a go with that and um, so now I'll show you guys uh, all the exercises that I did and talk in the end about all the stuff that I learned and if you're a fan of the movie Spirited Away uh, stay tuned for sure so now we're gonna um, go through my sketchbook basically um, showing like I said on the intro the exercises and the the work that I ended up doing uh, using everything I learned from from Mr. Gurney's class. So I forgot to uh, say in the intro as well that the video comes with a, a PDF file, six pages, and this basically just has the summary of the class and the pictures of some of the sketches that he did and uh, this handout is really great because uh, it shows you all although he goes through it in the video but um, it lists all the materials that uh, he uses along with some some Amazon links I believe and basically he uses like I said gouache and uh, watercolor mostly from um, M. Graham, Windsor Newton, Holbein and the case scene set is from Richardson so yeah, so now uh, in the in the video he suggests uh, using a sketchbook uh, for all this uh, work that you're going to be doing. So that's what I did. Um, I picked this uh, Jane Davenport uh, journal because it's a watercolor paper, 120 pounds, uh, and it's hot press, which uh, I really love. So I think from now on I'm just going to try finding sketchbooks with hot press paper because I really like working on this sketchbook and unfortunately I can't find them in any Michaels around me so yeah anyways so my first page of the sketchbook I just swatched all the materials I'm going to be using so um, I'm going to insert a picture here of what I used okay so uh, this uh, here on top are the Daniel Smith watercolor so everything here is Daniel Smith actually except for the white which is a, a Turner gouache and the purple which is a Winsor Newton Cotman purple haze so that one this three rows on top Daniel Smith and then the rest at the bottom are the Holbein washes which is what I ended up uh, using for for most of my sketchbook work because they're really I find them really beautiful to work with so so these are the first exercises that I ended up doing which is a uh, uh, the grisaille section and there he shows you the the, uh, the sketches that he did and then uh, the exercises which is uh, doing the transparent and opaque uh, versions uh, of the gris eye. So basically it's just ivory black and titanium white and I believe he even has a YouTube video uh, previewing the class and I think this exercise is shown there. If uh, I can find it I'll try to link it down below. And this one is uh, the one for underpainting using I used um, I think yellow ochre uh, Windsor Newton, no, sorry, uh, Daniel Smith yellow ochre with a acrylic matte medium, which is what he suggests for uh, doing as a 
as an underpainting, which is really great. I've never used uh, uh, the two before as a as a basis for watercolor, so it's uh, it's really nice to work with, and it's great because it doesn't wash out like um, if you have to. Well, when you were ready to put on the work on top, it, it stays put. So, so anyways, yeah, I didn't like this first two exercises. Oh, sorry, this one I didn't talk about. This is the spotlighting underpainting he didn't really include that exercise but he showed it so i ended up doing it and this one is uh this oh i think i used a uh, new new gamboge and the uh, matte medium with a uh, turquoise blue holbein so yeah like i said i didn't like how it turned out it looked messy because i didn't do what he suggested which is just to leave a few strokes and leave them no i didn't do that so <laughs> i ended up doing it uh again so this one I like a lot better. So this one is uh, the same as before, just uh, ivory black and permanent white. And I don't know if I mentioned, but it's the whole bind gouache that I use with it. So the transparent, which is uh, using just a uh, uh, ivory black gouache, uh, thin down, and then you increase the darkness and value. And then here is the opaque with a titanium white the opaque uh, and the so the sorry titanium white and the ivory black together to make it opaque yeah and then this one i ended up using instead of the yellow yellow ochre daniel smith i use a whole by new gamboge with a matte medium because i like that yellow much better it was a lot brighter and same for this and then this one is just using a transparent Ivory, ivory black, then you know two values, and then the white here. So that one, the exercise uh, I ended up doing is this one, which is uh, from Spirited Away, because I am a huge Spirited Away fan. So I use a lot of uh, images from there when I do sketch work. Like I, I do a lot of fan art for that. So that's a uh, this is original that I copied from and then this is what I did using the Grisaille method with a new gamboge underpainting so what I ended up doing I took a picture of the original image and then I turned it into a black and white image on my phone so I can nail the values and basically just drew it first here and then I did the coloring after so I'm really I'm kind of happy how this turned out just because, like I said, I'm a big Spirited Away fan, so, yeah. And the next one is uh, exercises for the complementaries, I believe. In the book, he actually talked about the Zorn palette first, so, um, yeah, maybe I'll show that first. So, this is the Zorn palette exercise I did. Well, like a version of it, so uh, I use um, uh, the Daniel Smith watercolor for this one except for the white, which is a Turner white. And then the rest are Daniel Smith. Uh, this is a yellow ochre, pure scarlet, I believe, and uh, lamp black. So the charts I did, I didn't include the lamp black. So basically I just did the opaque and the transparent versions of the, uh, of, um, like the three yellow ochre, the pure old red, sorry, pure old scarlet, and the uh, white for, with opaque, but this one is just a two color. So it's the same as the previous exercise with a, well, almost like the same as a trans, sorry, as a transparent and opacity test for the, for the grisaille. So yeah, so I the three different values. So here is just a yellow ochre, and then here is a combination of the, Pure old scarlet and the uh, yellow ochre in different values again, and then this one is just a pure old scarlet. And then this one I added the white to make it opaque. So it just really shows you how much how many colors you can get out of just uh, the limited palette. And what's great is that if you have his book, you can actually use it as a reference for for the exercises. Like uh, in the book here, he talks about the on page 105 of color and light it talks about the limited palette so you can see like a sample 
of his work that really shows um, how much you can do just with that. And then on the next page, I did the the test for the complimentary. So in the in the video, he used um, raw sienna and ultramarine. Sorry. Ultramarine blue for the exercises with white for the opaque test. But what I end up doing is I use a burnt sienna and ultramarine, ultramarine, oh my goodness, ultramarine blue Holbein with a white gouache. So transparent and uh, opaque. So again, it does with the burnt sienna here, combination of the two. And then just ultramarine blue, and then with the white uh, for the opaque version. And then I did a sketch, which I will show a picture here. I inserted a picture and not the actual page on my sketchbook because I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like how it turned out, so I just uh, wiped out the page and gessoed it and used it for a different exercise that you will see later. Yeah, so for some reason, it, that that picture just did not turn out how I wanted it to look. Uh, the drawing itself it wasn't... I mean, it was a simple... Again, that was a shot from um, Spirited Away. So um, it just... I don't know, I just didn't like how it turned out. Like how the browns were turning out. It looked too muddy to me, so... Anyways... In the videos, uh, of course, it's James Gurney, so all his, uh, all the exercises, the sketches that he showed were really great. The one that he used for the Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna um, sketch that he did, it's just a snow, snow bank on a parking lot. It turned out so beautiful, so uh, maybe I'll attempt something like that in the future. So, this one now is a, a wet blend. The wet blend exercise so what's wonderful about that uh, this course is that um, instead of oh, let me go here instead of using the usual color wheel he used the uh, Yermby wheel this one here which has a usual um, the usual color wheel but he and he sorry he added the cyan magenta and yellow So that's what he ended up working with and that was such a, this is such a, a mind-blowing thing for me because for that exercise he used uh, for, he used that complimentary um, color for the wet blends using this color wheel like I said, Ooh, can you see, okay, the wrong page. Uh, and for the exercise, he used permanent light, sorry, permanent green pale, and um, two versions of uh, purple to serve as a magenta color. And I, I tried to do it, but I ended up using because I didn't have all the colors that he had. So I used permanent green light from Holbein, along with the violet. So this is a wet blend test that I ended up doing. And I tried to copy the exercise that he did, which is, uh, it's a skull with three bottles. So I ended up doing this. I thought to myself, I'll make it a bit easier and omit the bottles, which was a mistake because I just should have done the bottles <laughs> instead of the skeleton. But uh, anyways, like uh, the drawing was okay, but as soon as I started painting it, I'm, anyways, it's, it's, yeah, it's nothing to write home about, but what I loved about this, exercises I found out I really love this combination so yeah like this uh, this is supposed to be a lot more light green and then it goes to a darker purple here because it's in the shadow but it end up turning really muddy and uh, does my eye sockets uh, for some reason I don't know anyways yeah but like I still like this exercise just because, uh, yeah, it made me realize I really like this color combination, which um, I don't think I would have thought of putting before. The violet and the permanent green light as a as a complement. So, yeah. So, like I was talking about before, because the um, 
the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue exercise didn't work for me i thought i'd do another exercise uh, using the complementary method and um, now i started using this color wheel so i thought i'd do a cyan and red combination so the closest color i had to cyan was turquoise on the holbein um wash and i used to I used that with a flame red so I did a, a different chart for that so the transparent which is just uh, this one just the same just with the one color flame red a combination of the two and then just uh, uh, turquoise and then here the opaque chart adding the white so again different values and the picture I ended up doing is of course another spirited away one and let me see if i can show this is a man this is a image that i tried to copy and uh so the image i ended up doing oh yeah this is uh what i ended up doing for the skull is uh i did a screenshot to as a reference for my drawing so this is a screenshot of the the video so yeah with the like i was saying with that chart i just showed so this is uh, the uh, image that i ended up doing again with holbein gouache so i kept this one this uh, i've I, I really like this a lot better than the the bus one that i that was underneath this image so, so this is the gessoed image so the bus is underneath <laughs> are you guys a big fan of Miyazaki like me I really love Spirit Away that was my all time favorite so yeah and that's it in terms of the exercises I'm 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 gonna be doing more for sure uh testing out all the stuff that I learned from his class, uh, his sample there when he did the color after images was really, was really cool. Like how he makes you look uh, on one circle at the corner of the screen, and then that the image that you see after really shows you the the color after images, like he said. So I really learned a lot from this class, like I said, and I highly recommend it. It's such a great class. Uh, like I said, working with this color wheel now which is what he was using in the in the video was uh such a like oh my <laughs> i don't know why i never thought of doing that wheel before using it but highly recommend it and um if you do take the class uh do the exercises watch it over and over because you can even download the the video from gumroad so just watch it over and over and uh keep practicing the exercises like i said and that's what i'll be doing i because i love i love swatching anyways and doing charts like that so so yeah i hope you guys um uh, enjoyed this video and if you have any questions as always please feel free to comment down below and don't for, don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching guys and have a nice day stay safe out there